I'm going to move this so it's not right in front of you, so there's no vibrational. Because my talk today is about vibrational alignment, so we have to feng shui the, the microphone stand. Okay, I might stand up in a little bit, actually. Maybe I will do that now. Welcome to my ceremonial talk, to our ceremonial talk. It is a privilege to be here with you. Um, my name is Michelle Infinity, and... Um, I'm teaching a wisdom lecture on consciousness and vibrational alignment. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself and then I will tell you about the journey to wisdom and how I have um, come into my own power, how we all come into our own power on our hero's journey. And in order to do that, we have to let go of certain things. We have to attune our frequency to our own truth, which takes courage and conviction and strength and just all these other forces that we're going to talk about and then just speaking about the journey itself. So um, let me tell you a little bit about who I am and what I believe is happening right now on the planet. 
because I think that's very important to um, actually you know what let's do something together let's all breathe together for a moment I think that might be conducive to the environment so everybody just close your eyes for a second now that we're all here together and we're sitting and we're being And I just want to start with a little meditation where we really take in the environment of where we are. So drop into your body and your being and really feel the, the vibration of these trees that surround us and the cool earth beneath us. And take a deep inhale and then as you breathe, breathe in fully. As you exhale, exhale, serene. And let's do that again. Take a deep breath in together. And then exhale and open your mouth and just... Good, and let's do that one more time. Three. And exhale for peace and unity and consciousness. Sat Chit Ananda. I am that. Tatwam Asi. And you are that. Okay. Good. So we can open your eyes whenever you feel called. You can close your eyes and you can listen to me receptively like that. So it is my honor to be here and to serve you. Um, again, my name is Michelle Infinity. My business, my wisdom teaching is infinite everything and it is the thread of all things. I do this by noticing patterns. My friend up here is wearing the shirt with the moon cycles. So I'm sure all you guys notice how the moon cycles shift our energy from full moon to new moon, right? And it's the same thing with our collective consciousness. In multi-dimensional consciousness, an infinite, if there's infinite directions of time and space and everything, then there are these infinite patterns that we go through in our own cyclical nature and also as a collective. And for the past three to four years, we've been going through a cycle that some of us call the first wave of ascension. And this culminated with that 2012. I was talking to a, a friend yesterday who said that it has to do with the planet Sirius and going in, or the star system Sirius, and going in this cycle where we're going into this golden age. It's every 25,000 years, etc. And so there's certain alignments that happen with the stars, with the moons, with the planets, astrology. We're all familiar with those concepts. And we have to pay attention to those cycles in order to bring us into vibrational harmony with what's going on around us so that we can make the most of these cycles so that we can continue to grow on our path of evolution. Because as we'll speak about later, what the detriment of that is not listening. Or listening and hearing and then acting like you didn't hear it. Which I know that I'm very guilty of, someone snickering. We pretend so much that what our heart is teaching us, our truth, our real truth, our visceral soul, right? No, I didn't hear that. I'm going to pretend like that didn't happen. And really, it's subtle. The vibration, the language of the divine, the infinite is like this, is this, I want to even say like this milky white, just like this really pure, like those little, um, those little seeds that float, or in the movie Avatar, for those of us who have seen it, you know, those little divine seeds yes. that they come and they say things are, that is the language of divinity. It speaks in whispers of the wind. And it is our job to tune to wisdom, to tune our vibration and to that energy so that we are able to connect and to listen and then to receive those messages and then what we're going to be talking about, acting in emotional and vibrational integrity in alignment with that knowing. And that takes courage, that takes a shift, of, that takes so much bravery to really become who we are. Okay, so just going again and back. Um, so for the past three to four years, I've noticed this cycle that culminated with the Saturn Scorpio cycle. And that just ended last weekend. And now we're going into a new phase. And this new phase 
I feel may last another three to four years, and it's Scorpio and Sagittarius. So we've been dealing with these deep inner truths about ourselves, and a lot of us have pulled back, have retracted from the world. Raise your hand if you feel like the last three years you've kind of pulled back from the out, outer, outer world. You've just been within, you've been within. The journey has taken you within, in an inner growth phase. Yes, okay. And then now, recently, maybe this last year, because I say three to four years for these cycles, because nothing in time, you know, time doesn't exist on many other planes, so we think linear, but everything's kind of ephemeral, just like the subtle wind, right? So there's transitions that happen as well. So um, answer, again, if you f have felt a call now to step out and to be more of yourself, like a very, like a, right, and now, so now you're feeling like, oh, it's time to step into your power and be more courageous and to, to, to know that you know and to walk in that path, right? Okay, so I feel that this next three to four years is going to be kind of a practice, like a trial run of going forward and sharing our medicine with the world. We're sharing our gifts with the world, acknowledging the gifts that we have and allowing ourselves to to shine, to be in, in service to them. Because really all we're doing is we're serving that truth, that heart connection, the vibration of love, the wisdom, consciousness. We're in service to it. It is bigger, it is like, it is infinite. And we are vessels of that light. And so it's our job to walk that path. It's a responsibility, which is I think what the message of the last three years has been is like, it's, hey guys, it's uh, it's your responsibility to uh, own up and walk your path. By the yeah. way, Hi. hey everybody. Psst. Hey, I got a secret. You gotta own your power. <laughs> right? And so, <laughs> and we're like, oh, okay, got it. So, um, so the last three years for me have been ex especially poignant because um, does anybody know astrology in my in the audience? You know Saturn return. So I timed my soul's evolutionary journey, timed my Saturn return with the first wave of ascension because I am hardcore and I'm like, so Saturn return, for those of you who don't know, is like, a, Saturn's the planet of karma and responsibility. So it's like, so it's like doubly strong, which I'm graced in a way because now I get to share what I've learned and share the wisdom and share the patterns that I've seen. So not only does this happen collectively, like I mentioned at the beginning, but it also happens internally. So let's go into like a concept about how, this is something that I've coined a phrase, it's called true alignment. And it makes me wanna stand up. So I'm just gonna stand up for a second, I might sit back down so I can be on the line with you. But just to embody what true alignment is to me. True alignment, it came as a vision of what your soul's truth is, and then walking as if you had wings walking and standing in your life, in your work, in your environment, at the counters, at the cash registers, knowing who your soul is, owning your power, and then walking in that truth in your heart, and then vibrating that from your heart outward into the whole entire universe because you know who you are, and it is your gift to society to emulate that. It is, it is a shared experience because when I show up, it's the namaste place. When I show up in my true alignment, I meet you and you and we can actually communicate. If I show up and I'm putting a false persona on and I'm like this, thinking that you're gonna do something to me and I'm guarded, we can't, there's no connection. And I learned that by going through my days doing that, thinking that I had to protect myself because I was on a journey within and then I was like, I'm not talking to anybody really, we're all just kind of shadow dancing with each other. And I was like, that doesn't feel good at all. <laughs> that really, and so I was like, well, what is it? It's because I'm not, I'm not being myself, my real self, and you can see who I am. And when I'm faking it, everybody, we cannot energetically hide anything from each other. There is no lies, especially since the 2012 shift, because everybody's light went on. So, right? So there's no more lies. So now even if we pretend like we don't know, everybody knows. So we have to show up in true alignment. True alignment, like what I said at the beginning of the talk, goes in so many directions. So there is this universal truth of who I really am. And then I'm gonna give you some backstory of yoga consciousness and yoga, how do I describe it, philosophy, yogic philosophy. 
we have not only the physical body, right? We have subtle energetic bodies as well. We have the physical body, we have the pranic body, and it, does anybody know what prana is? Life force energy, when we breathe, we activate our prana. It's very much like this, it's very shakti-like. It's also the chakra system, and we all know we have to bring our chakras into alignment, right? And then we have the mental and the emotional body, which I feel are in our chakras. I was thinking of this on the way over here. I was like, you know, our mental and emotional body, mental is sixth chakra, okay, it's my third eye, it's how I think about things, sure. Emotional is my heart and my gut, my belly. That gives me visceral responses, right? So in that, so there's so three layers so far, physical, right? Energetic, mental, emotional, yeah? then wisdom, higher vibrational plane, and then bliss, which is our soul. Those are our five koshas, or five bodies, that we all carry. Physical body dies, we don't take it with us, right? Pranic body, energy system, mental emotional, mental emotional, karma, attractions and aversions, the past. You ever have reactions to just people or things? Yes. Past. Right. In your chakras, in your vibrational truth, in your light body that, you, that travels with you from incarnation to incarnation. Wisdom consciousness, your witness. Who has heard that term before? Be in the witness. Some of us, yes. So the witness is cool because the witness is non-emotional. The witness, which is why I love this journey, is this wisdom consciousness of Zen like warrior quality, non emotional, just allows you to be present and move. And how do you move? You move in true alignment of recognizing what your soul's truth is and who you are. So you have to have a state of inquiry in order to know where you're going and who you are. You have to allow yourself to receive messages from that wisdom body. And in order to do that, we go through rituals of purification, which sound like fun when I say it like that, right? <laughs> when you go through rituals of purification. How do you purify your physical body? Go for it. How do you purify your physical body? Cleansing, diet, 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 right? Diet is so important. Physical exercise. Physical exercise. What were you saying? Speaking your truth. Yeah. So psychologically, that's that's how we and meditation. So physical body. Physical body is exercise. Physical body is diet. Right. That's so important that we're moving yoga, yogic practices. Being in nature, pranic body. That's how we cleanse the energetic body. The light of the sun, the moonlight. We, we sit in nature, we feel the breeze around us, we um, meditate, and we clear the mental and emotional body as well. So from that space of purifying the physical, those three bodies, the physical, the mental, emotional, and the energetic, we are able to access more of our soul's light and our truth and our wisdom. Because if we have blocks in our chakras, right, in our energetic system, if our back hurts and we can't sit to meditate, if our brain is going crazy monkey mind and we're just like, we just cannot get centered, there's no way to access that truth. And then what's beyond that truth is bliss, which is our soul, which is the, the, the subtle communication of our hridayam. Hridayam is our, our, our spiritual heart center. And that's the part that whispers to us in these subtle prayers, in, these, in this alignment of energy that's just really, like, eternal. It's just really eternal and there's grace in it. And so we have to do the work in order to bring our chakra system into subtle align into alignment, into true alignment, and then Purify our physical bodies, emotional bodies, chakra system, energetic system, mental body through meditation, prayer, and ri I'm just gonna, I got preachy for a second, did you hear that? Prayer, <laughs> prayer, and ritual for my personal journey of going within these last three years has been one of the most, like, you know why? 
because it's not you. It's you allowing a greater force than you to take care of it. Just, it's like you give it up. And if I could share practice with you in this moment, the practice is I don't know, but this is what I, my, I, my intention is. I offer it to you. Help me organize this so that I can receive what is in my highest good, what is true alignment for me in the situation. Because I know myself and I know my aversions and attractions and I know the sticky stuff of karma. Because the cool thing, the cool thing and the not cool thing about karma is karma pulls us back into the past and it takes us away from that future. And you know why? Because it feels comfortable because it's where we've been and it's what we've been doing and it just is like, oh, but I, that's, that's, I love that color. That color is blue. That's my favorite color always. I just identify with it. And what is the journey of the soul? Do you think that if we, if you believe in that reincarnation and we like, we go to earth and we're like, yeah, I want school. Do you think we're like, I want to do the same thing that I've done 20,000 times. <laughs> we're always pushing ourselves, right? So we have to take that moment to tune in to what, what is the pull of my heart space. So it takes purification and listening and inquiry and then showing up in emotional integrity. Emotional integrity is a term that I just, that just like came to me. And I, I love it, it's very visceral, it's very powerful. And it means making choices in alignment with your highest good, with your soul's truth, with who you are becoming in this world, not who you have been, not your story of who you are, not your limitations, not your mother's limitations, not your father's way of being in the world, but like, who am I in relationship to the higher power? Who am I in relationship to God? What is my service on this earth? And how can I make choices that are incongruent so that I show up in the world and then I'm, I'm offering, I'm an offering that my body, is, my life is a prayer. And so how do I become that truth? How do, and you, and it, every day we have choices to make. Every single day we have thousands of choices. And let me just tell you, choices in the past year have driven me crazy. Have driven me crazy because it's, I can see patterns. And, I can, and you guys probably too can see patterns. And you see, if I make this choice, what does it do? If I make that choice, oh, I didn't make that choice, oh, you know? So it's like this endless, so that just sticks us more in our mind. And it makes us fearful from making the wrong choice, which is unfortunate because courage is a really big part of this journey of stepping into who you are. And not being afraid to fail, I see that as a big thing is that leaving the attachment behind of how you're gonna show up or how it's gonna be and recognizing that your process is learning. Like you're not gonna wake up tomorrow and be perfect at like being your soul. If you have this whole life to live, then allow yourself the journey to wisdom. There's another term I wanna bring up. It's called your vibrational staircase. Um, this is falling off, so I might take it off. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Maybe it's time to let that go. I'm letting it go. Letting go. Very important. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Letting go. Very important. Letting go of what's not working. Paying attention, right? So I was paying attention. That's like that in action, right? Yes. Paying attention. I'm like, why is this talking to me? What is going on? And instead of trying to fix it, and who has done that? I've done that in relationships where you're just like, I don't, I'm just going to ignore the fact that I'm totally seeing this thing that I'm seeing and I'm just going to pay, I'm just going to pretend like that's not. <laughs> you're like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's a beautiful lesson, right? Or you're just like, you just learn to speak, like you just learn to speak your own language, basically. It's like, and the soul reveals itself to you over the course of your lifetime, right? Like you have to learn how to speak your own language. It's not just like you wake up and you're like, oh, this is who I am, right? You, yeah, you have these ideas and then eventually you'll see how it all ties together and how your ideas were kind of off, but like it's a mystery. Like life is a mystery and it's, it's a beautiful mystery and, it, and it's, a, it's a journey. It's a journey to discovering what our, what our voice is, what our true expression is in the world. Um, so, in accordance with our journey to wisdom and moving forward, um, I've seen this vision and it's, it's an attunement to the highest frequency that we are, that we have, that we can be. And I call it our vibrational staircase. 
So we have this ladder to climb in our lives, and it's the highest potential of who we are. If you want to link it to the koshas, our bliss body, our soul, our wisdom, consciousness, right? I don't feel exists completely within us. I feel like in a higher plane, our soul's up there, higher self is up there. It's our job to, to I love how you guys are like feeling it, how you, how you, you know, like drawing down the moon, how you pull, how you access your highest potential into your body and allow yourself, and it, through those purifications, right, of our physical, mental, and emotional health through psychological work on ourselves, we're able to access a portal. We open up the crown chakra in meditation. We bring the light down into us. We also fuel ourselves from the earth. Pachamama, thank you so much for the grounding that you provide so that we can actually do the work on the planet because otherwise we're just like, loop to lose, la 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 la, right? And I've been there. But now I'm understanding the power of this primal energy that like, you know, that fuses us, that allows us to be in our heart chakra space, in our hridayam, and allows us to be that powerful light so that we can actualize our soul's truth on the earth, so. Um, so when you have a vision of who you are, it's a wonderful, we come to events like this, right? We have opening portal experiences, right? We awaken to like this highest potential of who we can show up as, and, like, and then we go back to our house. And then the astral gravity of our office and emails and all these things that happen that remind us of who we were happen, and they kind of shut us down a little bit, and then we're only like a step forward, but we're a step forward but we're not in like that high, we're not like, we're not where we saw that we could be. So what do you guys do when, I'm gonna tell you what I do when that happens. I beat myself up, well I used to, I don't do that anymore. I, I see how the power of our words is very important. I let go of a behavior and the behavior was really like getting down on myself, which would be the op opposite of self-acceptance of where I am on the path. Right? And I was like, oh, I know better, and now I'm emotional and sad and not feeling really empowered. And, and then you make choices that are not in a vibrational alignment with your emotional integrity. Because you're not giving yourself the recognition of like, man, I've seen what my truth is. And I'm, I need to act that way. It's really important that I act in alignment with my racial, every moment of every day, no matter what is going on, who am I? Recognize that, who am I in my soul, in my gut, in my heart, and what is my gift to the world, and then bring that forth, no matter what, right? So instead of, so I'm gonna give a shift in perception. Instead of that, what I just described, why don't we treat the vibrational staircase of where we're going like a gift, like an honor, like a present, that we were given the vision, because a lot of people on this earth don't have that grace. That's grace, that we can even see who we are. So instead of beating yourself up for not be being that right in this moment, know that you are that and you're on the way to get there. And that every step that you take towards that direction of true alignment, of truth, is, a, is like a win, is like, it's, it's thank you, it's gratitude. It's reverence and respect for this life that we get to share in, that we get to be a part of this journey together and walk together. So it's a gift. So instead of being like, oh, I'm not who I need to be. I'm not, I'm not. I'm making choices of where I've been. You just reattune and say like, I'm, I'm gonna make the next choice better. And I only saw that because I made that choice. And you just allow yourself forgiveness. Acceptance of the self is being one. Knowing the many layers, yet seeing only love. When we tune to love regardless, we become compassion. Internal first, then external. It is by this practice that we save the world. So that is my message, is that as we tune to the wisdom, the eternal truth of our own hearts, we meditate, we have, a, the last thing I'll say, that another gift that I wanna give you, 
and then maybe we can do a little prayer and then we'll close. Our sadhana practice. Does anybody know that term sadhana? It's our morning ritual. It's our morning connection. It's an attunement to the frequency of love. And by allowing yourself each morning as you wake to be in reverence for life as it is showing up, as you are in your life each day, daily commitment, daily commitment, daily commitment to respect and reverence for our lives brings us into that power. There's no other way. We will look outside forever for recognition if we do not tune in to our own higher wisdom by giving ourselves some quiet time in the morning to connect with ourselves and to bring ourselves into that vibrational frequency of love. Because what happens if we don't? We will experience the lesser emotions during the day will experience grief or annoyance or frustration. And if we take our subtle body and kind of pat it around us in the morning and have a little coat on of really good like love vibration shield. I say shield, but it's like a, it's like an armor of goodness for us so that we can show up in this world that is not attuned to that frequency and radiate what truth is, right? If we don't do that for ourselves as a gift every morning, then all we're going to expect to see out there is like gunky and that gunkiness is going to and then we'll become one with that instead of instead of being light and radiating that truth outward which is what our mission is if you are if you're if we're together in this this is our this is our mission on the earth so we have to commit to our daily practice in order to step into our mission and our truth and our power so it's very very important that we that we commit to this and that we allow ourselves to be in service and in reverence to a higher truth in this world. So, aho, aho. Um, I want to sing or do a little prayer closing ritual before we go. Um, let me tune in and for us and then we'll have a, a space. So let me see what, what it's called for now. Mm. And I want to thank you guys all so much for being here with me and just thank you for the space. And so let's, let's have a gratitude prayer, a gratitude for reverence of, of who we are. And um, yeah. Okay. So the song that I was singing in the beginning, you already heard me sing. So we could do it like... Um, we can do it like a call and response. I feel like that might work. Okay. So it's um, Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Sat Chit Ananda Muyataye. I'll do it line by line. Nish Prapanchaya Shantaya Nira Lambaya Tejase. So, and the melody goes, I'll sing it first and then you guys can repeat it back to me. We'll feel it out. We'll see how this goes. Okay. Om Nama Shivaya Gurave Sachitananda Muertaye Prapanchaya Shantaya Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let me see. Uh, no, we'll do the last line. Nira Lambaya Tejase. <laughs> I'll do an easier one. Tejase. Okay, let me think of one um, for us that's... Okay, this one is about life being our teacher. This one feels right, okay? Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara. 
Guru Sakshat Para Brahma Tasmahe Shri Guru Dev Namaha. It's not as hard as it sounds. And even if you just go, I will still feel it. So it's all about the feeling. And we're doing this for ourselves. I want this to activate like in us, like the truth that was spoken for all of us and to bring that into the world. So um, it's just, I'm just going to do the first few lines and then you, you'll chime in with whatever you got, right? Okay. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Deva. No, I'm off. Hold on, because I'm hearing the people, so I'm. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu. Now you go. There we go. Yes, okay. Guru Deva Maheshwara. Maheshwara, yeah. Guru Sakshat Para Brahma. Bamaham, I'll sing with you. Tasma he shri guru ve namaha. Tasma he shri guru ve namaha. One more time. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Brahma. Guru Vishnu, like a celebration. Guru Deva Maheshwara. Guru Deva Maheshwara. Guru Sakshat Para Brahma. Guru Sakshat. Para Brahma Tasma He Shri Guru Ve Namaha Tasma He Shri Guru Ve Namaha This is the last one Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu, Guru Deva Maheshwara, Guru Deva Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Para Brahma, Guru Sakshat. Para Brahma Tasma He Shri Guru Ve Namaha Tasma He Shri Guru Ve Namaha We all own together. Thank you guys so much for sitting in ceremonial space with me. It's been an honor to share my message, my truth, and all of our wisdom collectively. We could not be here without each other. Energies and environment. So I honor you. Thank you so much. Aho. I have um, cards. My name is Shell Infinity. Infinite everything is my story to be and to share with the world. Please keep in touch with me and... Um, and find me on the website, do the little mail thing, and we will we will see each other again, I hope. So 
may all prayers and and the universe be with you and with you <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs>